Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to review Ikigai, the Japanese secret to long and healthy living. Ikigai is a concept that is ingrained in the Japanese values and it is not being propounded by these authors. This concept basically talks about why we are alive. Um, this is the purpose of one's life. This is um, something kind of a goal but not in the competitive sense of goal. A goal that makes us jump out of bed in the morning in excitement. This is our Ikigai as per this concept. The authors also talk about how it is not easy for a person to find their Ikigai. This Ikigai is a very very broad concept. If you are trying to find your Ikigai, you have to be able to find something that fulfills four basic necessities. That is, it should be something what you love what the world needs, what you're good at, and what um, you should you can be paid for. And when all of these things combine, they become your Ikigai. So for example, what you love and what you're good at, um, if you do these two things, it becomes passion. What you love and what the world needs, it becomes your mission. Now, what the world needs and what you can be paid for becomes a vocation. And what you're good at and what you can be paid for becomes a profession. When all of these things combine, it becomes your Ikigai. And this is the Ikigai that the, that the Japanese concepts uh, concept wants us to look for so that we can live a long and healthy life. Um, and the life will also be very happy. Um, this is a goal that makes us jump out of bed in the morning in excitement. Um, the, 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 the two authors that I just named are people who traveled to the islands of Okinawa uh, to find out as to why people, Japanese people living in these islands live generally longer than the people who are living in the general population in the world. Now these islands are famous for uh, for being inhabited by the people who usually live for around more than 100 years easily like not easily but there are a lot of people who are above the age of 110. So, the author also interviews these people, these authors interviews these people and we'll talk about this in the course of the review and summary. But uh, this book is basically all about how these people are living so long and healthy and happy life. Um, so let's loosely talk about the things that are being talked about by the authors in this book. The first thing is, they say that if you wish to lead a healthy and happy life, don't retire in life. For example, in India, people retire at 60, 65, 70. They say, okay, retire from the job, but don't retire from the mundane activities that you do in your life every day. For example, go and fetch milk from, from the dairy or, um, you know, do gardening in your park, something like that. So you, be, you, you, you remain active physically and mentally. Um, there are five uh, blue zones that the authors talk about. Uh, the first is obviously Okinawa. Japan, these blue zones are the places that are being um, identified by the world wherein people live very healthy and long and happy lives. And many studies have been going on in these islands as to why people in these islands have been living so happy and long lives. Um, the first is Okinawa in Japan, the second is Sardinia in um, Italy, the third is uh, Loma in Linda, the um, fourth is the Nikoyo uh, Peninsula and the fifth is Ikaria in Greece. Um, they also talk about how to eat. These people have revealed that they only eat up till the 80% of their hunger. So when they start to feel that their tummy is about to get filled, th uh, uh, to get filled, they stop so that their tummy is not fully filled. So, and um, they have um, so. The author also talks about this amazing thing that exists in the Japanese culture that there are so many things that are served in a platter or in Japan but these platters, the bowls in these platters are very very small. So the quantity of the food that ex that is there in these bowls is very small but when they serve you 5-6 bowls it feels like that you are being served a lot. So it helps these people in also uh, you know mentally fulfilling their hunger while also keeping their 80% rule intact wherein they don't eat, overeat. Um, then 
uh, when coming to the mental uh, capabilities of a person as to how when they get older how to keep their mental um, mental capabilities in high spirits he talks uh, the author talks about uh, the authors talk about how uh, uh, researches have proven that if we keep feeding our brain with new information then uh, the the mind will never stop processing it and it will not degenerate it will also all it will always be um in a kind of a very very healthy state which would not lead to problems like um um like memory loss that usually happen to people in their old age then um the authors talk about stress people in these islands have been living a very very laid back life um they plant their own um food they have organic foods they live in communities and these communities are always there to back each other up these people who are 90 years old 100 years old they they throw birthday parties wherein they feed each other good food and they are happy for each other and the authors also talk about how uh, these people believe and it has all obviously been proven um scientifically as well that when there is less stress in life um uh, you live longer um but then the authors also talk about how a little bit of stress is good for you uh and for and it, and it helps you to achieve your goals um then they also talk about how a lot of sitting uh can impact you very badly and you sh- uh, and that you should uh, keep your body um mobile uh you should not they also talk about how when you sit for 40 minutes continuously the digestive system's um, ability to digest food decreases by 20% so after every 30 minutes 40 minutes we should um, take a, a little bit of walk for 5 minutes so that our body does not wade into that kind of laziness wherein the processes and functions of the organs that had to be carried out Uh, are not being carried out properly and then they also talk about how sleeping is very very important today we observe that we ourselves don't sleep very well we sleep late and uh, then we have to rush to our um colleges and offices on time then we wake up um you know uh, after 2 3 4 5 hours of sleep but the authors talk about um how these people in these islands take 7 8 9 10 hours of sleep and that has helped these people in in living um a longer and healthy life um he also talks about uh, the, the authors also talk about how um the secret that the models don't talk about to their beauty is that they sleep up to 10 uh, 10 hours and this um uh, you know gives uh, these people less wrinkles and less you know all of these skin issues because uh, sleep releases melatonin which is anti-aging then the authors talk about the flow of concept they also um uh, liberally borrow from a book called flow flow is a defined as a state in which people are so involved in an activity that nothing else seems to matter the experience itself is so enjoyable that the people will do it even at great cost for the sheer sake of doing it in this he, uh, the authors talk about how there is a fashion designer who uh, who has achieved flow in his work and that he is not disturbed at all by whatever is going on and he gets really irritated if somebody disturbs him while he is doing his job then he also talks about how once when bill gates um went to japan to see the work ethics and he has uh, often talked about how immensely he is motivated and inspired by the people of japan um about their work work ethics he talks about how bill gates was taken to a very secluded place a very secluded hut kind of um a place where a lady alone was working and she was so good at her job and she had also achieved flow she was so happy doing in what she was doing she enjoyed it so much the authors talk about how if we wish to succeed we should also try to achieve flow in activities that we really love and this is uh, basically achieved when it becomes a habit the, it's it's nothing else it's mere habit that becomes um, a flow then um, the authors also talk about 
the concept of takumi it is about achieving and mastering a skill so much that you become irreplaceable um the authors talk about um artisans that work in uh, toyota company and they are uh, they have perfected the art of making a screw that ha- that has still now not been able to be made by machines so these artisans are irreplaceable and they are being paid well and they are very happy in doing what they do so he talks about how we should be able to do something so perfectly that we become irreplaceable then um he also talks about a co- concept called microflow microflow is to be able to do very very mundane tasks like doing dishes in flow and being happy doing it uh this is something that also is talked about by zen philosophy zen uh, monks talk about how while doing dishes um we should try to treat is it like a meditation like um you know we should be in a meditative state while doing it i have tried walking meditation and sitting meditation and i love doing dishes and i i believe it is very therapeutic as well so you 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 should also try to um you know imbibe this and see uh, that um i'll be reviewing a book very soon by thich nat hana the name of that book is the heart of buddha's teachings and this particular monk has uh, taught a lot of uh, zen meditations and these are really really nice meditations um we'll talk about this in detail in the, in uh, in the video in which i'll review that book then um the author also talks about how there was this olympian who told that um one of the basic things that she did for her training was meditation the authors talk about how meditating for some time in a day preferably in the beginning of the day is very very important to keep your mental balance intact and then you can go on to live a very healthy and happy life um then the authors talk about um interviews that they have done with these people who have gone on to live so long a uh, lives um and this is one of the uh, more fascinating part of the book so the first interview is with misao okawa and this person is 117 years old their advice is eat and sleep and you will live a long life you have to learn to relax which we don't do then the second person is maria capovilla 116 years old i've never eaten meat in my life so this person is trying to say that maybe be vegetarian but every person has their different views somebody says that i had uh, no wine in my life at all and there's another person who says that i have had wine every day one um uh once in a day so they have all different and there was um you know advices to give but um overall uh, we get the idea that how these people have been living so healthy life um then uh, walter brewining 114 years old if you keep your mind and body busy you'll be around a long time they say and alexander image 111 <laughs> they say very funnily i just haven't died yet um so um then um the chapter 6 uh, of the book talks about um lessons from japan sanitarians so obviously these people uh, these authors have met these people and the authors talk about the kind of experiences that they have had so the there's this village in ogini in okinawa uh and this village is called the village of longevity because of the simple reason that people here live very very long lives um so they try to describe the life that is uh that is being lived in this um you know village so there's this communal life that is that everybody in this village lives as a community so as i uh, i as i talked in the beginning that everybody celebrates together and uh, if somebody needs money then they can borrow from the communal uh, uh, communal savings um and then they can return when they have the money so, or for example that if there is somebody who's living alone then um there is somebody who will all who has told to the village that if you need me 
uh, I'll be there with a the car for you for example if you have to go to the hospital or there is some emergency so um, the authors talk about how in this village people are so much assured that they won't run out of money that if they want to go to the hospital there is somebody to help them out if somebody needs grocery and they are unwell then you know uh, how these mundane stresses of our lives uh, these uh, you know little little stresses these have been ruled out uh, weeded out of the lives of these people and that's why they live happily and long um, then they also describe their experience in a birthday party that persons are celebrating like I think 100 something birthday of theirs and everybody is very happy and there's a person in that party who's just 90 years old and they say that this person is a baby right now so he will live very long there, that is the kind of um, vibe that is there in that village and then uh, the author talks about um, the diet the ikigai diet and this is uh, more of Japanese diet but still um, he talks about how, the authors talk about how um, these people in these islands have very diverse food but these foods are also very organic and natural they try to avoid processed food so uh, locals eat a variety of foods especially vegetables and they eat at, at least five servings of fruits and vegetables every day and uh, grains are the foundation of their diet and that they rarely eat sugar and if they do it's cane sugar it's not the processed sugar and then um, there are some basic facts about Okinawians that they consume in general one third as much sugar of rest of Japan's population which means that sweets and chocolates are much less a part of their diet they also eat practically half as much salt as the rest of Japan that is 7 grams per day compared to an average of 12 grams now don't compare Japan with India alright in India we consume far more than we than these people in Japan consume because they have a culture of living healthy lives and eating healthy foods in India we have far more processed food now if you will uh, bring a packet of snacks from outside the, which is which is processed it will have grams and grams of sugar and salt in it so um, please don't try to compare Japanese um, statistics with Indian so if Okinawians are eating 7 grams Japanese are eating 12 grams Indian uh, Indians are eating far more than that um, then they consume uh, these Okinawians consume fewer calories an average of 1785 per day compared to 2068 in rest of Japan and uh, these authors also talk about how in all the blue zone uh, these people eat less calories whereas we try to consume um, around 2000 calories so these people consume less calories they apply 80% rule and then um, the authors talk about um, the antioxidant rich food that they consume for example tofu I think tofu is uh, quite uh, liberally available in India as well miso tuna tuna is a fish uh, carrots uh, goya kombu cabbage nori onions soy sprouts hachima soybeans sweet potato peppers and sunpin cha that is jasmine tea um so this cha thing we call it the tea cha in india also and in japanese also it's called sunpin cha and they also talk about how these the beverage for these people in these islands is green tea so they even consume it three to four times in a day which is very very healthy as compared to the tea that we have in India then the in the ending of the book the authors talk about uh, uh, various um, exercises that these people do these exercises are, are just like Surya Namaskar we have in India but these are different obviously different than uh, those but um, um, the authors talk about the particular kind of exercises now I don't want to do those for you right now um, and show you how to do them uh, but they are there in the book um, and then uh, the authors also talk about how breathing well for example breathing well is really important um, also if if you are feeling anxious if you will breathe deeply for four times you will realize that your anxiety is actually fading away uh, however it doesn't work with everyone because different levels of anxiety but still um, um, deep breaths or good 
good breathing is very important for happy and long life um is what the authors say and um then they also um talk about how breathing helps regulate a uh, heartbeat which in turn then regulates our anxiety and depression or or uh, you know our mental health uh, can be uh, can be helped by good breathing um um so this was my book review for um this book amazing book i would say that i read a little boring sometimes but still amazing um maybe i've read such books a lot that it became boring for me but a little interesting as well when the interviews part come or something you know new experiences are shared otherwise um the sermons about how good food and you know good sleep and they were very repetitive for me um um i'll be back next week with the new book review uh, till then take care stay safe